Hey guys, welcome to another edition of Bolts Breakdown. Brian Burns, beat writer for TampaBayLightning.com, JRetro620, WDAE. The series is tied at two. We appreciate you going up to the nation's capital and bringing back two wins with you. Yeah, you know, I, I did what I could. I brought the lightning and the storms up with us on the uh, He's team Thor. charter. He's the Thor. And uh, rain the whole time we were in D.C., so uh, maybe that was a little bit of good fortune for the Lightning. Yeah. And uh, it looks like it's raining outside right now at Amelie Arena. The uh -huh. storm is back, so uh, maybe it's a uh, foretelling the future here for Game 5. I love it. I love it. We didn't get a chance to do Bolts Breakdown last time. I was supposed to get my wisdom teeth out. You guys know the whole story about that. We're back every other game for the rest of the playoffs for this long Stanley Cup run. Uh, before we get into Game 5 tonight, Bernsey, and who were your three keys and my one guy to watch, let's look back on Game 4. I think the big thing early on in that first period is the response. Yeah. Orlov scores a goal, but right back, Braden Point scores a goal and just, just shows the resiliency of this team. Yeah, I thought that was really big, and I, that was one of my three keys from that game after that game. Uh, you know, John Cooper's talked a lot about how whoever scores first in this uh, series seems to have a little bit of an advantage when Washington was able to score first. Uh, they've been able to play their style of game. When the Lightning can score first, they take them out of that game a little bit. Um, so when you saw in Game Four that they were able to, Washington was able to get that first goal. Uh, a little bit of a worrisome sign, but the way the Lightning came back, scored almost right away. They got the power play, were able to go up two one, uh, and then carry that lead into the second period. I thought that was really big. Yeah, I mean, and then you know, obviously the big story of the game was that second period. I mean, three power plays. I know some people were kind of complaining about the rest, but I mean, three okay calls. I mean, I don't think there was maybe the one tripping call that went originally to Gordon Hedman you can kind of look at for the Oshi penalty. Yeah, it looked like he just tripped on the, the I know. stick there. I know. Um, but then you look at this penalty kill. I mean, this is one thing that was really worrying uh, fans and, and pundits alike after how well Boston looked in that last series. Uh, but to shut them down in the second period, that was huge. Yeah, I thought the, uh, the penalty kill, and I... <clears throat> Excuse me. I like what they've really been able to do on the penalty kill with how they're focusing all their attention on the Vetchkin. Mm -hmm. They're giving Kuznetsov the time and the space. If you look, he's basically just sitting uh, on that right yeah. side with the puck, looking for a passing lane, trying to get the puck over to a Vetchkin. There's no passing lanes available. They're giving him the time and the space, but they're closing off all of his passing lanes. They're taking Ovechkin away, and they're basically daring him to shoot the puck, which... You know, pick your poison. Who would you rather have shooting the puck? Ovechkin, Carlson, <laughs> Oshie in the middle, or uh, Ovechkin, yeah, or Kuznetsov. Well, Kuznetsov yeah, uh, you're gonna go with Kuznetsov there. He's the one that's kind of the facilitator. If you remember Jonathan Drewin here a couple of years ago, he was the facilitator on that power play. Didn't really look for a shot. Was looking to set others up. That's what Kuznetsov does in their power play. They want him shooting the puck, so they close down those passing lanes. They take Ovechkin away as much as possible. And I thought you really saw that on that PK where, where Tyler Johnson, right? I think it might have been Braden Coburn lost the stick, gave his, mm -hmm. uh, Tyler Johnson gave him his stick, and then Tyler Johnson's going for about 30 seconds there without a stick. So basically it turns into a 5-on-3, maybe 5-on-3.5. And, and if you look, all he did was he shadowed Ovechkin. Yeah, he just stayed right that's, by him. That's not their MO. They're not trying to just put, like, a, they're not mm -hmm. trying to man up on anybody. But once Johnny knew he had no stick, he basically was like, well, I'm just going to take Ovechkin out mm -hmm. of the equation and you guys can concentrate on the on other three. four yeah. over here. That's what they were able to do. That's how they were able to survive. Uh, and that's what you're seeing on this PK. They're trying to take Ovechkin away as much as possible and make Kuznetsov shoot the puck. And seven for seven through the last two games, it's been working so far. Yeah, and obviously the big story of this game, uh, number 88, the guy between the pipes. And I tweeted something out in the middle of the second period and some people thought I was crazy. And I said that this game had... Uh, you know, getting out shot by 40 to 18, but losing, but winning by a goal written yeah. all over it. And the only way you can do that is if you have a stud goaltender between the pipes. And Andre Vasilevsky, we said that he might have to steal one of these games in the playoffs. And Game Four was definitely that one. Yeah, I mean, what an unbelievable performance there was. The uh, there was like a three on two with Tom Wilson, and he was able to swipe with the glove. There was the. Uh, the play where someone threw it in front from the wing and Brett Connolly was wide open oh in front gosh. and almost batted it out of the air and Vasilevsky was there with the quick reaction glove save, uh, countless pad, leg pad saves uh, where he gets that leg right up on the post and is able to you know keep anything out on the edges. Uh, just a wonderful performance from Andre Vasilevsky. He's really the only reason the Lightning won that game uh, in game four. The Caps have to be scratching their heads right now because they – you know, the first period, I'd say, was, you know, maybe 10 minutes or so. It was tilted toward the Lightning end. The rest, because of the penalty issues, uh, kind of went towards the Caps. 
third period again, I thought the Caps played pretty well through the first 10 minutes or so, maybe a little bit even. And once the Lightning got that go-ahead yep. goal, I thought they did a really good job of shutting it down. Uh, with that second period, they were absolutely dominant. The <laughs> Lightning had no answer uh, for what Washington was doing on that in that second period. They had uh, very little offensive zone time. It was just like Vasilevsky was under siege constantly. And uh, he really stood tall for them, and they're the reason they came out of D.C. with with that Game 4 win, and he's a big reason why they came out with two of them. And you know what's surprising, too? He's such a big guy. And, you know, you compare him to Ben Bishop, and Ben Bishop is known for being such a tall dude. Vasilevsky's no small guy either. And But his ability to move side to side and be able to push off that post and get to the other side, he reads the play sometimes, Brian, before it even happens, it seems. Yeah, his side-to-side laterally is as good as anybody in the NHL. I don't know if there's a, a better goalie who can cover from one post to the other. Uh, as good as Andre Vasilevsky. He also he comes out and closes down the angle. You mm-hmm. saw it on that uh, uh, Carlson attempt with about 354 left in the game. Uh, uh, Carlson got free in the slot, and you wonder, how does that guy get open in the slot when you're trying to close off a game? Uh, but right there, Andre Vasilevsky came out, uh, closed off all the angle, forced Carlson to shoot into him, uh, was able to, to just kind of smother that puck and keep the lightning in the lead. And, uh, you know, Vesna Trophy candidate. Everybody's talked about you. We talk to the guys all year, and they all say Andre Vasilevsky's he's our MVP. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to go as far as he's going to take us. And uh, right now, if you're a Lightning fan, you got to like how he's playing. You got to like how he closes out these series, yeah. too. It seems like in the first two series, maybe the first game or two, uh, not shaky by any means, but maybe not his best performance. But as these series have gone on, uh, games four, or games five, he's really been at his best in these. Uh, kind of situations where the team uh, has a chance to close things out. And uh, you hope that carries over into this series because game four, we saw him at his best. Let's hope he can keep doing that game five, game six, even game seven if that has, yeah. has to go to that. One thing you really love to see, though, Burnsy, is you know going back to early on in the game is your best players have to play their best at this time of year. And yet again, Steven Samkos finds the back of the net. I mean, we weren't sure if that empty net goal was going to trigger him, but it seemed like it has in that series against Boston. Uh, he's been damn good ever since that goal, uh, and he's a big reason why the Lightning are right back in the series. Yeah, seven goals for the series. Six of them have come on the power play, and it's really no coincidence, though. He, he scored in, in every one of these Eastern Conference final games so far. Uh, it's really no coincidence that it's all happened since Braden Point has been put in yeah. the middle of that power play. That started at the beginning of the series, a little bit of a wrinkle that the Lightning uh, decided to go with taking Kalorn out of that spot, putting Braden Point in, uh, and that first power play unit you know, has been absolutely deadly with him there because he is. You know, Braden Point's one of those guys. He sees the play. You know, he sees one or one or two passes ahead of, of everybody else. He knows that as soon as he gets the puck, he can fire it over to Steven Stamkos on the edge. He's going to be there ready for the one timer, uh, and Stamkos has been the beneficiary of that move. And then you think about it like watching Washington's power play, uh, you have to keep an eye on Oshie. And I think now, not taking away th- anything away from Kalorn, but Braden Point's an all-star. So now people keep an eye on 21 to go, we can't just leave Ovechkin, and you can't leave Stamkos by himself because Braden Point will hurt you right in front of the net as well. Yeah, and you see on that on that power play goal the Lightning scored, it was Miller down low, then Kucherov, and then they those two feed off each other. Then they get the puck down low again to Miller, and Miller's looking in the middle mm-hmm. for Point. And then Point, he can go. You know, if they get that quick passing sequence going, there's really nothing the Caps can do. They can try to close down some of those angles, maybe do what the Lightning are doing, and just take away like one of those guys. Yeah. Let's say well, we're going to take away Kucherov this game, or maybe we'll take away Stamkos. But... You know, you can't cover everybody. And the way the Lightning are moving the puck right now in that power play, uh, it's just been lights out right now. And then how good is it to see a guy like, you know, Alex Kalorn right in front of the net where the dirty goals are scored, quick move to the backhand and slips it under. Uh, Braden Holpe, I was <laughs> yelling in the apartment and I was so <coughs> jacked up. Uh, what a big play by Killer. Yeah, and you look at everything that kind of went into setting that play up. You look at Sergachev. He hustled over oh, to, yeah. the, to the left point there. Uh, to make sure that puck didn't get out. looked like that puck was going to rim out of the zone. He he made it, uh, got there before it got out, then rimmed it back around to Andre Palat down low. And then the behind-the-pack pass by, by Andre Palat, mm-hmm. knowing that Alex Kalorn uh, had a little bit of a crease, a little sliver of daylight, and was able to uh, uh, to hit him with, with a really good pass. And then Kalorn for having the presence to not just shoot it initially, but get Hopi to bite and then backhand it underneath of him, really just... Well worked play when the Lightning things weren't going quite as well as they had hoped, uh, especially in that second period. In the third period, they got a little bit more chances, a little bit more even, 
Uh, they thought maybe they were going to be able to get the go-ahead goal on the power play. This one came right after the power play expired, so maybe the Caps were still a little bit in scramble mode trying to figure everything out. But uh, just a wonderful play all around. And you know what? You watch that game, and, and you see how the Lightning finished strong. They pulled their goalie at the end. It got a little hairy there. But I thought they did a really good job of making sure they stayed on Ovechkin. You know, the whole time is let everybody else beat you. And he didn't really get a prime shot off at the end of the game. And if you're having, if you're facing a team and they're trying to get back in it, they were looking to feed him. They just couldn't find a way to get him the puck. Yeah, they were looking for, uh, for Ovechkin. They were looking for Carlson from the point. They couldn't really get anything going because the Lightning were there to block the shots. They were getting in those passing lanes. You could even hear the... The Caps crowd almost imploring their guys to, you know, shoot the puck. But yeah, there's yeah. just nowhere to shoot the, the options that they wanted, where they wanted to get the puck. The Lightning had it covered, and they, you know, didn't have enough time to, to be able to figure out and unlock what the Lightning were doing. Jeff, let's go Lightning from Cincinnati. Thank you so much for watching. All right, that's Brian Burns, Tampa Bay Lightning.com beat reporter. Make sure you follow him on Twitter at bburns at NHL. You can follow me at jretcher. Let's talk about tonight's game, Burnsy. What's your three keys to victory tonight for the Bolts? Yeah, key number one for me is, you know, come into this game with a road game mentality. We've seen that uh, all four games so far in this series, the road team has been able to come out with the victory. Just carry that road game mentality into, you know, you're playing at home, you're playing in front of your fans. Whatever you've been doing on the road seems to be working. So maybe yeah. play with that same mentality like that. here at home. Uh, just that simpler game, that that uh, that straight ahead approach, not so much of the fancy passing or you know trying to make the fans like jump up out of their seats because <laughs> such a crazy play, but just yeah. play with that simple game that you do on the road, and uh, I think that'll help the Lightning here in Game Five. Uh, secondly, for me, is just keep up that relentless four check. We saw it really in Game Three and a little bit more in Game Four. I'd like to see a little bit more than than we saw it in Game Four. But really when the Lightning are playing their best is when that four check is going. And uh, the Caps did a really good job of neutralizing it in game one and game two. The Lightning went back and looked at the video, were able to identify some things, uh, areas where they were able to get the four check going again. We really saw it in game three. Uh, but they really need that four check to be at its best if they want to win because they force a lot of turnovers. It leads to that offensive zone time. It leads to some of those really good offensive chances. Uh, and that's when you see the, the Lightning uh, able to carry some of the play like we did in, in game three is when that four check is going. Uh, and then third key for me is you just they got to shoot the puck more. We, we, they've been outshot in every one of these games. It was, like you said, 38 to 20. Uh, in game four, Washington outshot the Lightning, even though they were able to prevail. Uh, but you just want to see more shots on Hopi, even you know more stuff from the point. I don't think the defensemen are, are getting enough through uh, from the points. I, I think they need to look for some of those shooting lanes a little bit more. And then uh, you got the guys that go to front that can clean up some of those rebounds or clean up, uh, get some of that traffic in front to take away Hopi's eyes and look for some of those redirects, some of those tips in the slot. Uh, but they just really need to get more pucks on net and, and test Braden Hopi a little bit more. Because I don't think he's been outstanding in this no, series. No, not at all. And I definitely think that there's uh, more room for the Lightning to be able to uh, to take advantage of him. Uh, Marty St. Louis put out a tweet about, I'm sure you've seen it, with saying yeah. that on the road he felt like he played more because the team wasn't worried so much about matchups. Do you agree with that? Yeah, you can see that. And I don't even know that matchups haven't been a big deal in this series. Not nearly as much as they were in the Boston series when the... Uh, the whole thing was you yeah. know, trying to match up the point line with, with the uh, with the Bergeron line. Uh, it hasn't really been like that. They've been trying to get the point line out against the uh, the Kuznetsov line, but you know, really Washington has scoring depth all the way through uh, one through three. They're four, maybe not quite as much, although they did have a goal in game four. Uh, but definitely one through three, they have three really good lines that can put the puck in the back of the net. So those line matchups haven't been uh, quite as necessary as they were in that Boston series. But, you know, talking about the road, we, we, we talked to Steven Stamkos in the locker room after morning skate, and he said, you know, you get on the road and it's just everybody comes together, you know. Like when yeah. you're here at home, you have distractions. Everybody goes home to their families. Obviously, you want to hang out with your wife, with your kids, with, with family members that are in town, uh, friends that are in town for this long playoff run. And you have a lot of demands that are maybe taking you away. Uh, from the game when you're here when you're on the road you know everybody's together you're watching video together you're practicing together you're, you're going to get food together you're watching the other series they all talk about you know watching the Vegas and Winnipeg series like you're doing everything together as a group and you know just being that tight-knit uh, camaraderie type of group that this lightning team is uh, maybe that just pretends to having 
uh, more success when you're on the road because everybody is a little bit closer mm-hmm. in those situations. And I think it's, you know, you play a simpler game. You play more Absolutely. north and south. And kind of what you said in your third third point there is, you know, getting more shots on net. Don't worry about trying to be too fancy. Just get up and down and just make sure you just throw everything on net. If you can do that, I think it bodes very well for the Lightning uh, going into this game. Um, but especially with a guy like Andre Vasilevsky in that, you have a chance every single game. And I think you saw in the final two games, rather than the first two games, when the Washington Capitals scored, a lot of it was from the outside, the Orlov goal. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, the goals they scored here at Emily Arena, they were right on the goal mouth right there. And, like, the Eller goal, who has played much worse. Him and Kempney, and that's why I wanted to ask you before I give you my one to watch, um, you're keeping guys to the outside a lot better. To me, I'm focusing on Eller and Kempney because Kempney scored the first goal in this series, and then Eller was like a man amongst boys in the first two games. Both those guys struggled heavily in games three and four. Yeah. I think if I'm the Lightning, I'm targeting those guys tonight. Yeah, Lars Eller's taken five penalties in this series. And that was something that was asked to Barry Trotz after game four. Is Lars Eller, is he taking too many penalties? And he said, absolutely. He's got to be better <laughs> than that out there. Like, oh, we, yeah. we can't have him going in the box. He was the uh, he was the only one that went in the box in game four. He committed both of Washington's penalties. Yeah, three in game three. Yeah, and then you got Kempney, who's uh, he's been cross-checking everybody in the head for some reason. <laughs> he got Paquette, and then he got uh, John the other day so and he's had a turnover early on I think that led to I don't know if it led to the goal or not but just a simple turnover I know Johnny had a pretty bad turnover too uh, but yeah like I, if I'm them I'm trying to take advantage of those guys yeah just you know not smart plays and those are plays where the lightning you know the, the four check puts them under the rest the pressure that they have is putting them under the rest it's forcing them to commit these penalties so if you're the lightning keep putting the pressure on those guys my one guy to watch tonight, Nicholas Backstrom. I and mean, you got to go with Backstrom. Uh, he made his return in game four. Um, I thought he did a decent job. I mean, obviously, after being out for a while, he's not going to be as crisp as he's used to. I'd expect him to play much better tonight. If he is in the lineup, you never know. Uh, but I thought he did well in the, in the draw. And I think they really need him with how bad Lars Eller has been playing. But how did you think Nicholas Backstrom looked? Yeah, I mean, I thought he was great. And... Honestly, I didn't expect him to play that well. I, I figured after the long layoff, and I mean, he's a pro. He's, he's going to play well. Obviously, he's in the playoffs, Eastern Conference Final. He wants to do everything he can to help his team win. But you got to figure if, you know, maybe is he getting rushed back in or maybe he's getting in a little bit earlier than he would in a regular yeah. season game because they need him so bad. Uh, I thought he played outstanding. Like you said, great in the face-off circle, really dangerous with the puck on his stick. Uh, he just gives them another element. And he's another like world-class player that yeah. the Lightning now have to deal with uh, and maybe uh, you know a youngster that uh, would have a tendency to tighten up isn't in the lineup now because they've got a veteran like Backstrom. In. Yeah, when you look at a guy like Lars Zeller, maybe you know it's been you know, the last two games they put a lot on his plate. And now with Backstrom, you can kind of take him off a little bit give Kuznetsov some help, uh, but we don't want to help Washington now at all, for sure. But I know the hard thing, and I think one of the big things a lot of people are asking, Bernsey, is that, you know, the away team has won all four games in the series. Uh, one of the last things before we let you go, uh, what do you think the Lightning have to do? I know you had your three keys, um, but what is like, you know, other than that, what do they have to do to make sure that they use the home ice advantage, use that as momentum? I think Tyler Johnson made a good point today when we asked him about, you know, what's been going on with the road team in this series. And he said, you know, the first two games, obviously, they were here at Amelie Arena. Uh, It wasn't so much that they were on home ice or road ice or whatever the venue was. They just didn't play well. And I I think Washington caught them off guard a little bit. I think, you know, we talked about it in the Boston series, how we thought the winner of that series had a pretty good chance to win the Stanley Cup because we kind of felt like those were the two best teams in the Eastern Conference. I'm not saying that's how the Lightning viewed it as well, but maybe there was a little bit of that mentality in as well. Like, hey, we slayed our big dragon in Boston, and, you know, Washington, they're just happy to be here because they got by Pittsburgh for the first time in a while, and maybe they weren't expecting Washington to have the fight that they did, but the Caps, give them credit. They played two unbelievable games in game two, two games where they really did uh, nothing wrong, and I don't think the Lightning were ready for it. I think they kind of got punched in the mouth early on, and it took those two games, and it took them going on the road, and everybody getting together and looking at the video and being together as a group to really see, all right, how can we break these guys down? What adjustments can we make so that we can start to impose our will a little bit and play our game? And I think that's what you saw in games three and four. And again, I don't think it was a case of, well, the games are on the road. The games are at Capital One Arena. The games, you know, the Lightning have won seven in a row. They've never lost to Washington (laughs) in a playoff game on the road. But I don't think that really matters. I just think it was more the adjustments that the Lightning were able to make. 
Uh, and I think we're going to see it here in Game 5. I think Washington, they probably made some adjustments now. They're, they tinkered with some things. Uh, I saw during their morning skate, they were playing around with putting Ovechkin in the uh, right circle now instead oh, wow. of in the left circle. So they're trying to figure out ways that they can get him the puck because it's not been working in the last two games. So it's kind of the chess match here, the Eastern Conference Final. It's not so much, I think, home venue, road venue. It's more of just... Uh, once coach one team gets out to a lead, gets out to a head in the series, the other team makes adjustments, and then it's just the back and forth of who's making adjustments to counter what the other's doing. Good stuff, as always. That's Brian Burns, beat writer for TampaLightning.com. Follow him on Twitter, at NHL member to follow the team, at TBLightning. Go to TampaBayLightning.com for all the best news and notes. Follow me, at JRetro. Follow the station, at 620WDAE. Go to 620WDAE.com for the best Bolts coverage. Pre-game starts at 530 over on our sister station, News Radio 970 WFLA. We're not missing any more games for the rest of the year. Come hell or high water, wisdom teeth or not. After today, hopefully the Lightning will be up 3-2. And then Monday, you'll be heading back to D.C. And I'll be at the studio. And hopefully we'll be talking about them clinching the game six. Yeah, if, you know, if the Lightning make the Stanley Cup, this guy, all his teeth are going to be falling out. His wisdom <laughs> teeth are coming in and jamming the others out. Like, he doesn't care. He's going to stay here for you guys. And look at this beard. By the time he's done, he's going to look like Joe Thornton. And, uh, you're going to look like your cousin, Brett Burns. Yeah. All right, Brad's Brian. I'm Jay. We'll see you guys next time on Bolts Breakdown.